When you're settling in for a movie, you might notice a pattern in the storyline. There's usually some conflict that arises, right? Then that conflict snowballs, gets messy, eh, until finally, someone steps up to sort it all out. The Book of First Kings is a lot like that. It kicks off with David as the king, but he's about to shuffle off this mortal coil. Enter Solomon, David's offspring, who takes the throne and even gets around to building the temple. But then, things take a nosedive. From there, Solomon starts making lousy decisions, setting the stage for a series of kings who just keep one-upping each other in the bad decisions a department. They're all into idol worship and turning away from what's good, marching down a dark path. And then, tada, we meet King Ahab. He's the epitome of awful, the peak of bad kingship. But guess what? His significant other, Jezebel, has a lot to do with that. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. Let's dish on Jezebel for a sec. She's the daughter of Ethbal, Phoenician royalty, which automatically makes her a princess. Then, she ties the knot with Ahab, bagging herself the queen title. But here's the kicker, she's all about worshipping Baal, that Canaanite god of rain and fertility. Yep, you got it, she's big on idols. This lady's got clout, power, and a wicked streak. 1 Kings 21 verse 25 spills the tea on Ahab and Jezebel. It goes, No one was like Ahab, who sold himself to do wicked things in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel his wife. Ahab's got his rap sheet, no doubt, but a chunk of his downward spiral is thanks to Jezebel. She's a pagan at heart, not vibing with the God of Israel one bit. Flip over to 1 Kings 18, and you'll catch her red-handed trying to off the prophets of Israel. That's some serious evil moves. Imagine going head-to-head -head against the God of Israel and trying to snuff out his crew. But get this, it wasn't Ahab swinging the axe on the prophets, it was his queen Jezebel. Picture this, 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah chowing down at Jezebel's table, not Ahab's, not the head honcho's spot. That speaks volumes, doesn't it? It's like a neon sign cautioning you about the Jezebel vibe. It's a spirit that wields power, influence, and a voice that's not to be trifled with. Jezebel, oh boy, she was a whole other force. Not only did she overshadow her hubby, but she straight up undermined his authority. Check this out, 1 Kings 21 verse 25 spells it. There was none who sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord like Ahab, whom Jezebel his wife incited. This lady had some sway, let me tell you. There were moments when Ahab seemed like he might turn a new leaf, maybe follow the right path. But every time a glimmer of hope showed up, Jezebel snuffed it out. One of the most glaring instances? The whole vineyard debacle in 1 Kings 21. Ahab wanted this piece of land owned by a dude named Naboth. But Naboth, being a stickler for God's law, wouldn't sell it. Ahab, naturally, wasn't too thrilled and moped back to his palace. Now, enter Jezebel. She takes matters into her own hands, frames Naboth, and gets him off. 
she basically pulled off manipulation Olympics right there. Okay, here's the kicker, Ahab didn't kill Naboth, but he could've put his wife in cuffs for the whole murder gig. Instead, he's like, yeah, gimme that vineyard. He caved to his own sinful desires, and Jezebel's influence was no small part of that mess. It's almost like he was dancing to her tune, you know? Then, in 1 Kings 18, we've got Elijah, the prophet, throwing down a challenge to these ball worshippers. He's like, let's see who's God's for real. Long story short, Baal's prophets couldn't light a candle, but Elijah's God. Boom, bull on fire with a single prayer. Elijah exposed the phonies, and then he gets Jezebel all riled up. She's ready to take him out, and he hightails it. You'd think Jezebel would've learned her lesson after that, right? Nope. She keeps up her shady game until her eventual, pretty gruesome end. Elijah prophesied it, and it went down exactly like that. But even though she's long gone, her vibe, her spirit, that's still hanging around, shaping folks' behavior and actions today. The Ahab and Jezebel tale? It's a cautionary one. Hang around with the wrong crowd, and you might find yourself making some seriously messed up decisions. It's like that verse in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14, talking about not teaming up with those who don't share your beliefs. Light and darkness? They just don't mix. Now, let's talk about this whole Jezebel spirit thing. It's not just about sex appeal or seduction, it's deeper than that. At its core, it's all about control. This spirit's not picky about who it influences either, whether you're a guy or a gal. People caught up in control games, power-hungry types? They often end up being the biggest headaches, trust me. Take a peek into the church or even some homes. Conflicts often boil down to who's calling the shots, right? Pastors versus elders, deacons versus choirs, it's all about that control game. And let's be real, it's not just out there, it can seep into our homes too. You've hit the nail on the head about control in relationships. The Bible's pretty clear, it's all about love, not that control freak stuff. Husbands are supposed to love their wives, not boss them around. Are you loving your wife, pal? Cause if you're on that control trip, trying to dictate her every move, you might be waving that Jezebel flag. And hey, ladies, respect your hubby. It's not about controlling him or pulling strings, that's a Jezebel move right there. Here's the scoop on control, it's tricky. The Jezebel vibe, it's wicked because it's all about wanting that power. But think about this, does God force you to do anything? Nah, he wants you to choose to love him, but it's your call. See, the story of Jezebel's a big, red warning sign about people who talk the talk but don't walk the walk, especially when it comes to faith. They're all about the religious game but miss the heart connection with Jesus. They're like those Pharisees back in the day, playing the holy card but missing the point. Jezebel wasn't exactly a model citizen in the authority department either. She strutted around, thinking she was all that as queen, disregarding Elijah and anyone repping God. Sound familiar? Today's got its fair share of folks ignoring authority, doing their thing without a care for order or respect. You might spot them in churches, families, or even communities questioning every rule in the book. But check this out, 
Despite all their power and status, Ahab and Jezebel, they got their comeuppance. Jezebel, with her squad of prophets and all that pull, couldn't control her own end. Power doesn't mean squat if you're not on the right path. They even pulled off a murder for property that's next level messed up. At the end of the day, it's not about control, it's about love and respect. That Jezebel spirit? It's a warning sign about those who fake the faith game, those who throw their weight around without a care for what's right. Power and status? They don't guarantee doing the right thing. It's all about heart and doing right by others. You're hitting the bullseye here. It's not about fame, power, or status painting the path to the good life. That's just what the world shouts at us. In the words of Jesus, it's a whole flip, the first will be last, and the last, well, they'll be first. Being a humble servant? That's where the real good life's at. You know, most stories wrap up neatly, right? Climax, resolution, the whole shebang. But in first and second kings? It's like they skipped the resolution part. Every now and then, a king would get a nudge from God, but for the most part, it's like evil kings on parade. Ahab, he was the kingpin of evil, hands down. The king's book? It's like, hey, everyone's going into exile, end of story. Talk about an unresolved cliffhanger. But hey, here's the twist we've been waiting for, Jesus Christ. He's the real resolution, the happy ending hundreds of years down the line. Most kings led folks away from God, but Jesus? He led them right to righteousness. He didn't chase power, instead, he laid it all down to serve. When he could have punished his people for their mess, he took the hit for them. Now, that's a climax you can't top. Jesus, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, that's the mic drop moment right there. Sure, the Jezebel spirit's kicking around, but guess what? Our God's spirit? Way stronger. It's the ultimate conqueror of all things evil. If you're rocking that Holy Spirit vibe, you'll spot those Jezebel traits and know how to handle folks caught up in that spirit. Prayer's your power move, ask to be led by that Holy Spirit compass. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.